The prostate sits at the base of the pelvis, uh, underneath the bladder, and the urine actually travels right through the middle of the prostate on the way out. Uh, the prostate is responsible for making about half of the semen uh, and is where all the parts of the semen from the seminal vesicles and the sperm from the testicles all mix before ejaculation. Prostate cancer is like any cancer. A, a cancer is a proliferation of cells that are abnormal and can do great harm. Uh, just because you have a tumor does not mean it's cancer. It could be a benign tumor. A cancerous tumor is, one, is a cancer that has very ill effects and sometimes can uh, cause death. Generally, there are no symptoms of prostate cancer until it's more advanced, when it has spread. Uh, localized prostate cancer tends to be asymptomatic, which is why we find it generally through screening with the exam and PSA testing. Well, the only way a man finds out that he has prostate cancer is if he goes to the doctor and he has a regular checkup, and that in that regular checkup, uh, the doctor will ask pertinent questions that may have some, uh, give him some indication uh, that uh, prostate cancer it could be a uh, diagnosis that he could have. Uh, he will ask family history. If you have a strong family history of prostate cancer, then that would be a reason to, uh, to think of that. But how they would ultimately test for that is with a blood test called a PSA and a rectal examination. A digital rectal exam, uh, is uh, done in the doctor's office, in the privacy of the doctor's office. Uh, doctors do it different ways. Sometimes they put you in a fetal position on the table. Sometimes they have you stand and just lean over the table. And the doctor, always with a glove on, uh, will uh, place his index finger that's well lubricated into the rectum. The, te the examination should just take a few seconds as the doctor feels along the, the rectal edge and feels the prostate. And what he's feeling for is firmness in the prostate. The prostate should, in a normal state, feel like the palm of your hand, very soft, and very, uh, very supple. A prostate cancer, you can feel a little hard spot in the prostate, or if the whole prostate is involved with cancer, it'll feel hard like the top of a desk. Any physician can do a digital rectal exam as part of their examination and order the PSA as part of their lab testing. The PSA stands for prostatic specific antigen. The PSA is a protein that circulates in the blood. Uh, to uh, find out what the PSA level is, you take a simple blood test and uh, it measures the PSA. Well, I believe if they have a family history of prostate cancer, a family history being a father, an uncle, a brother that has prostate cancer, I believe that screening should start at 40. Now the recommendations have been changed uh, multiple times, but personally I still believe a man should have his first PSA testing at 40 years of age, especially if you're African American because African Americans have such a high prevalence of this disease. Had my doctor not been diligent about following that PSA, um, it could have been a good chance that I might not be here today. So I, I'm thankful for it and I know there's been some some word out about the PSA and its relevance uh, in terms of men being tested, uh, but I'm a very strong uh, advocate for testing. It saved my life. Uh, I've talked to many men, they say the same thing, and particularly for African American men, um, I think it's a very important test for these men to have, uh, and men in general, but particularly for African American men. No one makes a treatment decision based upon the PSA test. It, in effect, is the same thing as a check engine light coming on in your car. To where your check engine light comes on, you don't go running to your mechanic and say, hey, I want you to fix my habiframis, you know. You don't know what it is. What they have to do is look under the hood. The PSA test is the check engine light going on in your body, and they have to look under the hood by doing a biopsy, which will give you the definitive treatment as to whether or not, or the definitive answer as to whether or not you've got prostate cancer. The PSA or the exam leads us to the level of suspicion that we do a biopsy. Uh, the biopsy is done via transrectal approach, which means that there's a small probe put into the rectum and small pieces of the prostate are taken with a needle uh, to be evaluated under the microscope. 
So during a standard biopsy, we would generally do 10 to 12 biopsies at uh, one time. Sometimes uh, we do this under sedation, but generally we do the procedures with the patient awake. Uh, often we will give numbing medicine. Uh, it's somewhat uncomfortable, but uh, it's a very short procedure, and most men really get through it without any difficulty at all. The biopsy, more than just giving us uh, an answer, do you have cancer or not, it really tells us how the cancer may appear to behave. Um, cancers can be different grades, and you'll hear talk about Gleason scoring, and that's a, a description of the appearance of the cancer under the microscope. Um, and that appearance can suggest a certain type of behavior. Uh, we also use the PSA number that was originally often the reason to get the biopsy to help us develop a certain risk group that a person falls in for prostate cancer. Uh, and then we can help make decisions and recommendations for treatment based on that risk status. I began my training in the 1980s when 40,000 men died from prostate cancer. In the 1990s, in the early 1990s, PSA became available. And over the last 20 plus years, we've seen the death rate from prostate cancer decrease from that 40,000 by 40% 40 to under 30,000 men now die of prostate cancer. And the only way that I know that those men have been diagnosed has been with PSA because we found these men earlier, they've been treated earlier, and they are cured.